All righty then. Asa wants to see how ABS systems work. Here's your name. ABS module. This is the car. The car is traveling to the right here. Going down the road. We've got signal wires. It's raining again. Where are we going? Because the entire base starts to again. All these things are inputting like this as it's rolling. It's good of you to catch that. I did that on purpose. What happened to that tire right there? Why did it quit sending a signal? There's a bad black spot in the tunnel. Or, or, it stopped. Why would the rest of them be showing? Because that one hit a slip pot of oil. Right? It stopped. So, what's the computer going to do with that thing? Gets put in the brake, and ABS module takes I'll over. What's it? Well, yeah, but it it's starts the ABS correct. module. What's the ABS's goal to do? Once that thing flatlines, what's its goal? Correct. Yeah. Correct. How is it correct it? Uh, apply brake. Well, Applies brake because it's already skidding. No way. What? It'll release the brakes on that tire. This one? Yeah, and then all the rest of them will be engaged. They just still be engaged. It'll release it until what happens? There you get a signal again. Wow. Hopefully the electric don't go out. We had electric flip flash off three times. I thought it wasn't going to come back. I thought it was going to go out um, all Okay, so ABS module is looking at all four. So LF, this is what you see on scan tool. RF, S, some say WSS. Right front wheel speed sensor. Or they might say right rear MPH. Probably is what they more than not. Wheel speed sensor might be a Ford. You might see that in a Ford. They gotta be weird. Um, left rear MPH. Uh, and th this and this, this module looks at them of greater than three MPH. So below three miles an hour, most vehicles don't even care. Doesn't matter if you skid. They don't care because you're going to basically stop. You ain't hitting something hard at three miles an hour. Um, so if this amplitude up here goes, uh, if it's like this and it goes like that and then it goes big again, what's it going to do right there? If it's less than 0.200 millivolts. If that, remember I had that signal yesterday where it was, you know, this is the, Permanent magnet, all these, let's pretend these are permanent magnets because most cars are permanent magnet sensors. So let's go up and down, up and down. Let's say this is uh, one volt. It's going down, up and down one volt. And then it goes like this. And this is le uh, less than 200 millivolts. What happens right there? What, what, will, the, what will this guy do? Well, if it if it's less than 200 millivolts, and this don't don't read less than 200 millivolts, it just says nothing. That basically, in the computer's mind, it's a flat line. What's it gonna do right there? Break. It's gonna break. It's already. What what does the computer release, think happened right there? Yeah, it's gonna release. Why? The computer says what? Slowing down. I don't know. It's it's the time. Are you applying the brakes? Yeah, we're on the brakes, and all of a sudden, because this happens on Chevy pickups, slow speed above above three, three miles per hour, so it does care about it, but it's less than 200 millivolts, and it doesn't 
read less than 200 millivolts. It says less than 200 millivolts is nothing. It's no, zero. What's it gonna do right there? I'm saying release brakes. Release the brakes, why? Because it's skidding more than the other three. Is it, is it skidding or does it think it's skidding? Oh, it thinks it's skidding. It thinks it's skidding. Still, still going past, but the, the magnet's too far away. It doesn't read it. <laughs> right? Same analogy as this magnet here. You know, you got out here, I don't got no pull. So it's, instead of being right next to it and making a voltage, it's over here. Oh, so this is a, that's how that yeah. sense. So some of them, you've probably changed tone rings on a Ford Escape, right? Yeah, I've done So you got an axle, and then you got a tone ring that goes around here. It's a, it's a ring like this, and then it's got, you know, all your little bumps on it all the way around here. But what happens is, <clears throat> this thing gets rust underneath it and it jacks it. Rust is actually really strong. It'll jack it, jack it, jack it until it pops. When it pops, basically it gets a crack in it, right there. Ma the magnet from the sensor doesn't flow across that crack and it stops. Right there, it, look, it thinks it stops right there every time. So basically it thinks it went from, let's go over here where it's good back there again. Let's go over here where it's good. Basically it goes like this and it just goes like this and then it goes like that or something like that. Huh. What's the thing happened right there? Skid what? Skidding. Computer, Computer thinks it's skidding. What's it do? Release. It releases it. So it goes <laughs> every time that goes past it releases it. Boom, 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 boom. Pet cars do that stupid stuff like that. How do you find that? You literally find, first time I found it, well, some cars, it actually sounded like somebody was shooting a 22. Ding, 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 ding. Every time, it's on Lumina, old ones, we don't see them anymore. Um, I ended up having to take a lab scope to it and it was, it was doing this. Now why was it failing like that? Uh, that was the internal wheel speed sensor. I, I don't really know, I didn't get to physically see it. Um, but it thought it was stopping, stopping, stopping every every rotation, um, and it was it was ding 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 ding. ding. So if an ABS light or sensor, I would say, not light, but sensor goes bad, how do you isolate it to what sensor it is? Um. You can look in the computer and see uh, there will be relief valves like to release the, the pressure from a wheel, you can see which one's activating. Because you might not be able to catch this right here on an actual scope. It'll probably have some dropouts. If you watch it long enough, it'll probably have some dropouts. But if you can't catch it here, you can look at which, which one is releasing. Is it releasing the right rear? Or which one is active? There's a bunch of different stuff in there. If it's releasing the right rear every time, then you know you don't probably need to check the other three. Go for the right rear. How hard will it change out? Um, depends on the car. That one there is not too bad. I think it's one bolt on that Dodge Caravan. Down the country, whatever that is. Uh, some of them is a whole wheel bearing. On uh, Andrew's car, it's probably the whole wheel bearing. Front and back. Yep. Um, this gate is probably the worst system ever. Maybe, but it should be almost, but it's got the whole hybrid thing, the regen braking and all that stuff, so it's probably a little bit yeah. Uh, so there's this is the simple anti-lock brake system. Then there's traction control. There's all kinds of stuff that they run through this same module because it does all this. I guess and while we're on the topic, I would like a better understanding of what traction control is. Well, traction control. All right. So let's say you're on the gas. You're on the gas, and all of a sudden. This one's uh, going 6 MPH, 6 MPH, 6 MPH, and 23 MPH. What's the ABS going to do to that, that wheel? It's going to do a couple things. Traction control? Well, when you go spin, spin, it goes, <laughs> when you check wheel bearings and it don't hardly go, you know why that is? Zero, zero, 
six, 24, 36, 18, zero, zero. We, the computer knows the car's not moving. Those suckers are spinning like crazy. So it, it actually actuates the brake pressure to these wheels. It does a couple things. I don't know if it actuates the brake pressure for sure on all cars, but it will, it will uh, torque limit the engine. So I go, <laughs> but no, it does actuate the brakes because it goes, it does the different brake things. It, it goes on, so it actuates brake. And since it has that ability to actuate brakes, which is kind of scary, because if your if your computer freaked out the right way, it could stop you in the middle of the highway. I had one car. It was a Buick LeSabre, '96, I think it was. This thing actually stopped the whole car. And he couldn't move. You know what was wrong? Battery connection was loose. What? Kid you not. Battery connection was nasty. Well, it, was, it was loose and it was arcing. And it freaked that computer out. And it, it applied brake to all wheels and he couldn't move. <laughs> we fixed that. We never had another problem. So, so it, it can actuate the brakes just if it wants to, because it, it blocks out the master cylinder and it applies pressure, because that's what that pump is. You hear the pumps? And it blocks off the master cylinder, because it has things it can block off and open, and reservoirs that can take the pressure and stuff. Block off the master, apply to whatever wheel it wants to apply, to stop that wheel and bring that back to, you know, two MPH, or whatever, you know, to it knows it's not just sitting there spinning. I guess, if you were somebody that didn't know how to drive and you got on a wet road and you just put it down, traction control is probably to keep you from going, you know, like somebody. It stops that and it, then you can control it, which some people don't know how to drive, so that's what we have now. We have cars that are smart. Why did you say ABS system was a bunch of bullshit? That's just an acronym. Uh, like, is it actually stupid? It's also my wife's. Uh, Initials. <laughs> she was ABC, now she's ABS. <laughs> um, but no, it's kind of cool. So it looks at a lot of different stuff. So do you know some of the things that ABS looks at? For the, there's traction control, there's, uh, what do they call it, skid light? It's traction control kind of, but. Um, Stabilitrack? It's not Chevy, I think, use that. Everybody probably has their own. Stabilitrack. Um, it uses a lot of different things. Accelerometer. Uh, lateral. What are they called? Lateral? G forces? It uses the yaw rate. So, yaw is the vehicle turning left to right in relation to the earth. Also controlled by the rudder on an airplane. <laughs> um, so it uses the yaw rate. So if, sometimes we have to reset these things because they'll be off. But you can reset it on a scan tool, reset yaw rate. Don't be driving the car because if it's going like this and you reset it, that thing's at zero. It's going to think the car's always going right. So the yaw rate, it, know, it knows if your car is actually turning. Okay? Steering angle sensor, it knows if your steering wheel's turning. So if your car, if your steering wheel's straight, and your car is turning left, what's happening? Hydroplaning. You're hydroplaning, you're sliding. So it might say, okay, car's turning left. Um, car's turning left. The yaw is it's yawing to the left. It's so what, what what brakes would I apply? If the steering wheel's straight ahead, what brakes would I apply to get that not to stop yawing? You go push on the rudder, opposite way of the Opposite rudder, so it's going left to put right rudder in? It applies the right brakes. Kind of cool, isn't it? It's like a skid steer. It'll apply the right brakes because it knows you're lying. Boom. It's going left and, and your steering wheel straight and it's going left, it knows you're lying. It'll apply the right brakes and try to get you on course. My wife's Sequoia, you, if you take that thing and just for the stupid of it at 30 miles an hour, just go, it will, it will just, it'll just stop it. Like it'll just, 
it'll it will not like it. It will just basically lock you up. You can really piss it off. Its traction control too is insane. Like even when you shut it off, it's still on. It's just less. You push it and hold it for five seconds. The tr track RSC it calls it something. They all call it something different. BSC RSC. That makes sense. Uh, lateral G forces. So if this one is shows straight and the 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 steering or uh, no sorry. Let's so, let's say the yaw rate shows yawing left. Morning, Joel. It's nasty out there again. Yeah. You uh, we don't have a tornado shelter, do we? No. Not really. No. We it's, actually, I think though it's going to report tornadoes already through. We actually tend to go run out and try to catch the tornado and give it up. Yeah. Five, five. We like to for it to take us up to Jesus, yeah. like Elijah, right? Uh, steering. I used to know a guy that actually would try to. If he would see a whirlwind, he would go run into it. Yeah, he's loco. Okay. All right. Yeah. He was, He's actually in prison. He treated his family horrible. He was not a good guy. That's yeah. Um. Okay. So let's say this is the data we have. It's it's yawing left. It's going left. Um. Steering angle is straight. In the in the G forces. So the lateral G forces. Lateral and what's the? I think they call it longitudinal. So if you turn if you turn left, and you know this from your pilot too, but if you turn left on a car around the curve, what happens to your body? Does it go from the center of the curve or to the outside of the curve? Outside of the curve. Okay. So lateral G forces would be. A, so normally it's supposed to be zero, let's say zero. This is, let's say it's point 0.5. So it's steering straight, but it's, it's yawing left, and you got lateral G-forces. Does it know that you're actually turning, even though the steering wheel's straight? It's again, it's, it's back to the PCM, like the whole circle closed loop thing. This guy's looking at different things. So he ignores this one, or he keeps, he thinks about, he knows it's yawing left, he, he knows the steering wheel straight, and he knows it actually is going in a circular motion because there's lateral g-forces going out. So he, he makes a better decision. I do have to apply those brakes. That makes sense? Kind of? Yeah, actually it does. Um, Ford Explorers, I think, were the first to do this. They, they will, because they had a rolling tendency, Engineers figured out that if they, if the right things happen, and they know it's getting close to a roll, they will apply the inside brakes to get you around the corner. So it doesn't, I don't know how it does, it makes a difference, but they, they apply the inside brakes to basically stop that and get you around. Because let's say your steering wheel is more than what the yaw is, so they know there's slip there. Let's say this should produce 10 degrees a second of yaw. And they're doing this in 10 degrees a second of yaw. They know that you're basically sliding. It's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. So they'll apply the inside two brakes to get you around that corner. That's kind of stupid, but there's a lot that goes on in ABS module. Used to just be brakes. Then they throw traction control and um, whatever they, stability track. They threw that in there. Um, so stability track. Stability, stability track is more like what we're talking about so now. It controls the yaw, uh, and then it's only it does. It's not active until you do something crazy. Until you do something. Yeah. You know how to disable? Uh, let's say you're trying to check a wheel bearing on the thing, and you want to completely disable this on my wife's car. You'd have to do this because you can't shut stability track all the way off. You have to unplug one of these. It'll set a code for it and turn everything off. Then you get done. You plug it back in. Drive it. The light goes away. That's what we literally do because some cars like Nissans and stuff, they're, you can't shut them all the way off. Ford Explorers even, I don't know if you can. They had all the lawsuits. I love Nissan. You really do? Because I don't know if I love you if you do. I don't love Nissan. I don't love Nissan. I'm actually going to all the way. Um, does that make sense on ABS? Yeah. That's really cool. I love that. Can I actually take a picture of that? 
Yeah, you can. Um, or you erase it. Yeah. So this, the ABS module communicates with the ECM. So, the PCM. Wouldn't it be the PCM? Yeah, probably. So they communicate data. So it will send a request to limit the torque and how much it should limit it. Morning, uh, Tyler. Wow, well, took you a second. I know, dude, I'm horrible with names. <laughs> oh, my brother's name. Yeah, he, I called him his brother's name his first month, so don't feel bad. I finally got it. I had to use Sarge for a while, and Sarge broke the Azure from Asa, and then I can call you Asa. No, it's looking like round two outside, though. It's super dark and rain. Yeah. So you can have a, um, a torque request signal come from the ABS. To say, tell the PC, I'm tell this little guy in here, uh, don't give me so much power. Limit the power, I'm slipping, I'm slipping. Limit the power, limit the power, I'm slipping. The stupid thing is, when one of these sensors lies, it lies to this, this lies to that, and will shut your motor down. And you're going straight, you're trying to take off the G-I-G-O, man. I had a Ford Explore ex Expedition. The steering angle sensor would go, <clears throat> so let's say you turn the steering wheel left, and let's say this is just your graph on the scan tool, so it would go, as you turn the steering wheel left, it would go like this, and then it would go zzz, zzz, like every round or whatever. When it did that, it thought I was turning, but everything else was lying, was correct, and it, it um, it thought I was turning, so it decided it needed to shut this engine down. So it started going into torque limit mode. Well, that's logical. Completely that's logical, yeah, yeah, logical. yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, I mean. But it is logical, somebody programmed to do that. It literally was doing that right there. It said, it, it thought I was taking a steering wheel and going, whoop, whoop, whoop. And it, shut, it was shutting the motor down. It needed, it needed a steering angle sensor. Crazy. Uh, but you gotta look at the, all the data, even in, so I could have went to the PCM and said, this thing won't take off. It needs a bad, it got bad plugs, it's got bad ECM, it's got bad fuel pump. So in reality, it's only one of those. In reality, it was inside the steering wheel, like by, behind the steering wheel. It was a problem, and it was causing the engines to run bad. So, um, look at all codes. I think on that one I had to look at, Obviously, it wouldn't take off right. I think the customer told us it was after you go around the corner or when you go around the corner, something like that. But if you look at the, uh, I'm gonna call it the torque limit PID. Um, PIDs, do you know what PID stands for? Anybody know what PID stands for? I know it's early in the morning, you have to yawn. Uh, I don't know. A PID is a parameter identification. Like all the scan tool, all the data is data PIDs, PIDs, parameter identification. When you fire up a Ford, it said, hey, this might not give you all the PIDs from factory scan tool on Ford, you just fire them up, PIDs. So if you look at this, this didn't set a code. He was doing exactly what he was supposed to do. He wouldn't do nothing wrong. If I tell you to take out the trash and you take out the trash, did you do anything wrong? I uh, don't. No. no, I mean, that's exactly what he's doing. Was this guy doing anything wrong? No. He was being, he was being fed garbage. <laughs> garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out on the power. So they're not all liars. You have to find out what the, who the liar is. Wow. That sucks. <laughs> Especially what's really bad, though, is when you also have a... Um, a yaw rate sensor maybe that's doing something as well. I don't know if I've ever had this happen, but let's say your yaw rate sensor is doing really stupid stuff as well, or it's not calibrated right, and you have that, so you fix this, and you still have another problem, and you might still have a problem, but that's when, usually when something comes in like this, it's just that. 
but <clears throat> Jeremy had four oxygen sensors on the same car go back at the same time. You have to change all four of them. Gotta love cars. You gotta love cars. We do love cars. It's what we work on. That's what makes our paycheck, right? This is kind of cool when you understand it. Also, like, there's inputs would be uh, brake signal from the from the pedal. That has some wires that go up to it. Uh, brake signal, e-brake signal. It would probably know that. It knows. There's a ton of stuff it knows. Um, probably it even knows the brake fluid level. And it, it, it knows all kinds of stuff. It knows the brake pressures. Some of, some of them do. Inside the lines like that go out to all the brakes. Um, So this would be an output. It knows the brake pressure going to them. Um, morning, Griffin. Morning, Wesley. Good morning. Wesley could teach this class better than me. What's that? Wesley could teach this class better than me. What's that? Stabilo track, ABS, all that stuff. Oh yeah. Yay! Right. Like you, ever, you ever have a, a steering angle sensor lie to you and cause the ECM to go into torque limit mode? I have too. Yeah, driving, I've been driving down the road and all of a sudden, <laughs> you're like, can you say you're printing it like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Yep. Yeah, that. Try to laugh. Well, it was a fun one. Try to like Escalade. I had it on a, a Ford Ex Expedition. Um. It knows all this stuff, so it can set codes for all kinds of different stuff. It can set codes for wheel bearings. It can set. It can probably set a. So. It would set a code for this if this got really bad and stayed down here. It was totally unbelievable. It would set a code for it. Probably be steering angle. Steering angle implausible. It's probably the code that would set if it went down like that. Steering angle implausible. Because it knows something's lying, it just has to say, okay, are these three are these three correct? Okay, then it's gotta be that. If it knows something's lying. Anyway. So what would be like if you get a car and this is back in day yeah. Working its way out. You got a car with uh, an engine that was just cut off in a bad ABS sensor. What is your first thing to do? Uh, first thing would be pull codes and everything. Okay. So pull codes. Um, it might. It's probably going to have codes in ABS if it's doing that. More than likely. I'm not sure if that one had a. Because of a bad wheel speed sensor. It, these are monitored pretty highly and it'll set up. 0045, I think, is the code. So, signal erratic. If it has an erratic signal, or it'll, it'll send a circuit code. So, a circuit. This would be a signal erratic code, but there's still a signal there. If you had your. Uh, this is the, the sensor again. This is a sensor. If you had, and this goes to the ABS module, like that. So this is the ABS sensor. If you had um, a bad tone wheel where it was just, if you had a bad spot on your tone wheel, it would set something like that. And it would set in signal erratic code because it's erratic, it's not always there. If you had a bad wire, it would set a circuit code. CKT, open, short. So, R, F, W, S, S. Right front wheel speed sensor, circuit open or short. I've seen a lot of those on GMs. That, that, an, open or, an open would show an open or short code. Erratic code would be just like, if it's got a bad signal, garbage in. 
Make sense? Yeah, so I guess my the circuit codes are easy to find because it'll set a code right away. You can erase it and it'll come right back. It's still there. These codes are a little hard to find. You might have to get a lab scope out. So how do you test the sensor? We've been through this, but I'll, I'll go through it again. Just because I'm right. And then you unhook it. Unhook it, set it to ohms. And how many ohms did you have? It's just a little PM sensor. It's got a little hair wire in it. Will speed sensor. You should know how to, uh, you're, you're done if you have Can it be really low ohms? Like, what if you had one ohm there? Would it produce any voltage? Your brain's fried. <laughs> it's, it's about one kilo ohm. One kilo, one kilo ohms, thousand ohms. Approximately what a wheel speed sensor would be. They go from 850 to 1200, somewhere, yeah. somewhere in that range. He was asking how to test it. That's one way you can test it. What's another way you can test it? Let's say that says good. It's, it's, uh, let's say it's uh, 987. What are you going to do next to test it? What's it produce? What kind of voltage? Does it create flat bolts or squiggly bolts? <laughs> I call them squiggly bolts. That's what they call it. Squiggly bolts. Hey, put put your meter on squiggly bolts. All training, right? Everybody gets it. That's right. All training. Okay. And you rotate that wheel. What do you want to see? Yep, AC voltage. So now we're at volts. And this will be a small voltage, so point. What, what do we need to see for, for it to be good? Turn it. What's it stop reading now? Less than 200 millivolts. I don't know. Do you know exactly what stopped reading that? No. I don't either. I just know 200 millivolts ain't very good. Yeah. Morning, Burton. Morning. So let's say it had 150 millivolts when you spin the tire. Oh, you get out of the thing. 150. Is that good? Or if you spin the tire and you get uh, 0.900 millivolts. Or point, 0.900 volts is 900 millivolts. You're the one to get the G left scope out. You could uh, hook it up to the power and ground. Uh, if you wanted to. Hook it up to the power and ground. And uh, so you'd have, this is AC, so you would put your little cursor right here in the middle. So zero, zero, negative five, and positive five. The lab scope. And it would start here. And as you spin it, it would go. As you spin it, Zip, like that. Make sense? Based on it being hooked up to that. No, it's, it's still unplugged at that time. Right? It's unplugged from the car right here, yeah. But it, these are plugged in there. Yeah. Morning, Sam. Good. You have to bypass all the trees this morning? No. No? I was in the two Really? Oh, What happened? Well, the road that cut across the Billberry Street. Go leaving Goshen. That the road that cars going the other way. Somebody completely blew the stop sign so going 13. She bumped a truck, made it roll over in the ditch on the other side. And there was three state troopers, two military cops, one undercover cop, an ambulance, and a fire truck. The fire truck was going to cut the truck. Apart. That's not cool. Hope he was okay. There was a pretty bad wreck on 17. I think somebody hydroplaned it. A Toyota uh, Avalon looked like hit a F-250. Yeah. When I would think he probably spun around. When a light compact SUV makes a truck roll, it hit hard. You know, it hit hard. And that was five minutes before I left. I was going to leave early. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, yeah. I was leaving my driveway when I heard the siren going off down the road. Yeah. I was like, oh, what's that? And then I was like, oh, it's a traffic accident. <laughs> You guys, what, what am I missing? So the ABS module, obviously, it's got the wheel speed sensors and it's got some signals from other things. But it's got the yaw rate sensor. What's the other things it uses? Yaw rate sensor, steering angle, long, lateral g-forces, and longitudinal. Yeah. This, some have a rough road, don't they? Yes, yeah, some have a rough road sensor.
I think it's G's. Yes. What else do they have? That's about it, isn't it? Yeah. Right. And they do a lot of crap with that. A lot of that, yes. These are other things they still look at also, but yeah. Um, yeah. Only well, other thing I think they could look at is they might look at the ambient air temp sensor. I don't know. They would. If it's negative 40, I don't know if they even know that. Your tires would grip different. I don't know if that really matters, but so a lot of good stuff. But that lies to this thing, man. Any, any of these things lie? That's got to decide which one's lying, or you have to decide. Um, uh, yeah. I explained that yesterday okay. when we were doing PM PM magnets. But yeah, if it is too far away, basically if the magnet and the sensor is too far away, well, it's really if it's let's say it's supposed to be here, and right here it wouldn't read anything at any speed. So if it was supposed to be here and it was right here, so it has to go really fast before it actually makes over 200 millivolts. So as it goes slower, it drops below 200. What's what's the ABS module think when it drops below 200 millivolts? It thinks it's stop. It sees that as nil or zero or NG or whatever. Something I'm teaching these guys is, you know what GIGO means? No. You ever heard GIGO? No. You know what it is? You don't? Really? I haven't heard that. Garbage in, garbage out. Oh, there you go. I've heard the term. You've heard it down that way. Really? No. Yeah. It's always a garbage in, garbage out. I never heard it down. Yeah. It sounds like some movie character. GIGO. Wait, I know. GIGO. <laughs> But literally, I mean, garbage in, let this car, I'm just using this for example, that car that had the yaw rate sensor was doing that, feeding garbage to the ABS module, what did the ABS module feed the, tor the PCM? Garbage. Garbage. And what did I get? I got garbage driving. So, um, what else? While we're on this topic, is there anything else? Next week, I'm curious, do you guys understand AC theory really good? AC? No, I'm talking about you guys. AC theory, like exactly how it works. Air conditioning AC. Yeah. Not pretty well, but not not 100 percent now. Not to teach a class. Yeah. I don't. I have never taught a class on it, but I I understand in my head pretty good as that water. Actually? It's the same as water. It works the same as water. It's boiling points negative 14 degrees. You're excited about that? I am too. Jeremy's going to be here for it too. I'm not doing it until Jeremy's here. Because he he knows how to do things with the gauges, but he's like, that's, or with the machine, that's where he ends. He doesn't understand why it does what sometimes. But it took me a long time too, but I'm going to do that one. Um, I think we covered this pretty good. Do you guys have anything else you want to, any questions uh, about something else real quick? About 10 minutes. It could be something completely different. I should have left this up here. No, I actually, I went home and you kind of explained that pretty spot on. Okay. Well, more or less. My car, well, actually my brother's car, when you turn it over, it won't, it won't start every time. It goes, and then it starts. Why is that? I've never seen it. Like it doesn't crank? Maybe not. Morning, Mike. Yeah, it don't crank? That sounds like he's got bad starter or something. I don't know. But what? Bad starter, as you guys said. Well, I can do a couple different things. It's probably got a bad starter where it's just like short, like sizzling, and then you take it and it goes. So probably in that car, the uh, you got starter, you got the solenoid. So now I've done it. And you got the big lug. Twelve volt battery power. You got the uh, other side goes in, and it goes to the brushes. And then it goes to the motor, back to ground. So this is a solenoid. We drew this the other day. So that your car is probably this has a, another coil here, magnetic coil that pulls this in. And so it goes, one of them goes to, actually one of them goes to this. 
not quite sure how, but it does. And the other one goes to the signal. So your, the, your brother's car that's just sitting there and going, ee, either these contacts right here, I'm just gonna draw corrosion around them. They either have corrosion on them or this, these uh, brushes right here might also have corrosion or like a, not a good contact. And so it's like, and you hit this two or three times in different, you know, if, you, if something not making contact, you smack on it, Usually it'll make a contact and then it'll start the car for that time. So it's it's the brakes corrosion off or the, the arcing, the arc, like this is a really heavy, like it makes sparks every time it engages. So Maybe you need to test it. Now that you know how to test it, I can test it. Can you draw how to test it? I don't think I can. I mean, I'd have to find the here, come power. Here. Come on, that. Not Is it with the scope or with the? No, oh, just a test light. Test, test light. light. What's this supposed to have? Twelve volts. <clears throat> Twelve volts. How, what time? All the time? Sometimes? When you turn. Actually, no, all the time. It's battery power. Yeah, does the battery just shut off for any? No, no, no. It's all okay. The time. So we got 12 volts there. 12 volts there. So you got a test light. What's that supposed to have? 12 volts. Okay. Well, I should plug it in here. Yep. Disconnect it. Don't disconnect it, but yeah. That's okay. And a little light here. Yep. And if it lights, it's going to go. You have to have something else for a light to light. Ground. Ground, so just go here. Yep. Power ground. That should be always on. When you hit that starter, if that light goes out, then you have a problem from here to your battery, or from here to your battery. Ground. That light always has to go. Because what can happen is when you engage this, you're requiring a ton of work to be done. You have a, you have a connector here. You've got a connector it's here and a connector that's going like this, and then you got green crap coming out of it. It'll have it'll light the light, but then when you require a ton of work from it, it will go off. So what happens if the light doesn't go away? If it doesn't go on at all, then you don't have any power. Yeah. You got a wire that's bad. So lights This on. very rarely happens. So the lights on, it's yeah. starter. <clears throat> if that light stays on when it goes, we know it's not the power. We do know that's good. So, so we eliminate, we don't have to look at that anymore. And uh, <laughs> then at that point, I would, I would put the light right here. On this signal? On the signal wire. So yeah, it's basically on all that. Put that on the signal wire, and then every time you kick it on, it should be nice and bright every time. Nice and bright, nice and bright up here. Yeah, this stays on all the time, and this is only comes on when your signal goes on. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if it's bright here and bright here, then it's Yeah. They're really easy to test. Test light in one helper, and you get a starter nailed out. So, yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Is that easy? On what? The only thing you'd be able to use power for on that same Jeremy Mike. Solenoid. Right here? You could make sure that this stays at 12 volts. I like a test light because I don't even got to think about it. If it's lighted, it's lighted. For stuff like this, power probe has its place. You could also, let's say that you did not light here. This was nil. NG, not good. You turn the starter, nothing there. Where you could use a power probe is, I'm just gonna draw a battery up here. So this is the plus side, this is the negative side. If you had a power probe, uh, this goes all the way to here, but if you had a power probe, it goes from here to here, and then you can put whatever you want in here. You can switch it between. A power probe, you can switch it this way, or you can switch it this way. Yeah, so if you had a power probe there and you hit you hit that with power, which it's supposed to have, and then the engine starts, what did you eliminate the problem being? The signal wire. Well, we don't have power there, so it could be the signal wire up here. This could be broke. Yeah, that. that that's what I'm saying. But you know that the, what's good? Starter. Starter works. You know, 100 percent sure the starter's good at that point. Then you have to chase the uh, you know relays and all that stuff. Good, the fun stuff. You get to chase the fun stuff. A lot of times. If uh, it just clicks one click, you take a hammer and you go, have somebody hold it on, take a hammer and go smack right on that solenoid, <clears throat> takes off, you know it's a starter. That's a Ford truck or Chevy truck or whatever. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Or anything metal. Anything with a uh, solenoid on. Make sense?
Any other questions? What if you turn your shoulder and it goes, Wee! It's not grinding. It's too far away. Well, not really. Let's say the teeth are engaging. Um, this has a, the Bendix? Yeah, that's what it was. Bendix has a OWC one way clutch in it. It's a sprag. So after your engine starts, it doesn't try to spin your starter way up. It just, it just sits there and spins like internally, it unlocks. That van, the Tyser Town and Country, have a one way clutch on their alternators. So when you turn it off, it doesn't torque the belt. Do, I, don't, I think that's what it's for. It's kind of weird. That could be bad. But then at that point, if it goes, Wee! and it should coast down like that, not like, ch -ch 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 -ch. if it does that, then you know that the starter's not turning. You know the one way clutch is holding, but the starter's not turning. It could be locked up engine. But if it goes, Wee! and coast down, the bending either ain't coming out and going in, or it's not actually connecting. Like, it's bad. So at that place, you point your place is starter pretty much, unless you have no teeth. You could have no teeth on the uh, flywheel, but it's usually going to make some noise because it started last time. You know what I'm saying? So, anything else? Does it make sense to you guys? Oh yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dave.